and uh, it is nice to have you today again. Uh, next slide. So just uh, to go through uh, some important things. Uh, Zoom interpretation on, on your laptop. When there is interpretation at the meeting, look at the top button uh, at the bottom back bar. Then there's a lot of but, uh, button options. One button with the global with well, one button would be the global with uh, the word interpretation, interpretation and I will see it. Click on it, this, click on this, and you will see options of languages. Click on the language, language you would like to hear, for example, English or Portugal, Portuguese, French or Spanish. Next. Now, if you are using a mobile or phone, again, when there is interpretation at the meeting, click the three dots with say more, and I will click the button that the language interpretation. Then you will see options of languages. Click on the language you would like to hear, for example, English, French, or uh, Spanish. Then you can also click a button to mute original audio, which means you only hear the interpretation. Um, interpretation. Remember to click done to save your changes. So now we we are going to have. To start talking, come again. Yeah, should I repeat it? Okay, okay, fine. Thank you. Now, uh what is the self advocate movement? Uh, the self advocate movement is the right movement, right movement. It is about people with intellectual disabilities speaking up for themselves and fighting for your life. We work to change laws and attitudes so everyone can be treated fairly and include. Included in the society, it is about it also about connecting with other people with intellectual disabilities who understand the barriers and challenges we face. We come together to support others. Now, uh, now, why did the advocates? Why did the advocates group form? So, the group of advocates back then was wanted to challenge, challenge this, 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 uh, this, this, this and lack of. Right. First of all, this institutionalization and community living, and to stop others making decisions for us and about us, giving us the voice and the blood 
platform to share what we want. The Zealot Bogus movement was influenced by the wider disability rights movement and independent living movement. Empowered people with intellectual disability to organize and advocate for us. So, in the beginning of the advocacy movement, before 1960, most groups working on the rights of people with intellectual disability were sent up by parents and families. Uh, in 1960, again, at the end of the 1960 in Sweden, a group of people with intellectual disability was supported to come together and make decisions about participation in the community life. In 1970s, after hearing about the group in Sweden, more groups started in Europe, Canada, and the U U.S. The first of advocates conference were held in Canada and the U.S. In the 1980s, more groups started to grow and meet nationally and emotional. Self advocates group campaigned to close institutions and be included in the community. <coughs> Self advocates started in creating information to share with others now to start and organizing groups. Now we are going to watch a video from the first meeting uh, group. People first, moving on. It seems like we already know which one we all want. That one is people first, moving on. <laughs> Okay. That's Rosa. Rosa. Will the convention of the People First Round Two please come to order? If you want this to make some kind of a sound, either clap or say yes as loud as you can. Okay? Okay, now wait. One thing, we want representatives on state DD Council, Developmentally Dis Disability. Do we want this? Okay, we want representatives on President Committee on Mental Retardation. Do we? We want an organization on national basis. Do we want a national? Yeah. We've been talking about having the right to speak up for ourselves and having the right to speak up for others. We have the right to be able to help one another in their problems. We have the right to, to vote, to read, to get married, to go downtown. Okay to live in your apartment. We have all of these rights and more. The Roseburg High School vocational training class gives us jobs, 
training and work experience. It helps us to get a good job when we get out of high school. One of the periods in class, we have a group discussion. During the class, we talk about our problems. We also plan field trips. The group plans this trip to Ben. The students did it on their own. The main idea of the class is to prove to others that we can do things on our own. We try to prove to others, students in school, we can do something instead of sit in class. Okay. Uh, thank you. Now, the last five years of the Save Advoc Advocacy Movement, nation, uh, national organizations that people face Canada, Save, and people first in New Zealand were founded to unite groups. In 1990s, the first meeting of the advocates group in Europe was organized by Inclusion in Europe. The first group in Asia was established in Hong Kong. Inclusion International first the committee of the advocates was in, was in service. and the information about the importance of the present language and is really was created by the advocates advocates group in Latin and Africa continue to be in service, including a short down Colombia group as down Colombia group in 2010 and Kenya's Thai group in 2012. Salad Martin uh, was elected to the Committee of the Rights of Persons with Intellectual Disabilities, which monitors how countries implement the CRPD. Several projects were supported by Inclusion International to be part of the negotiations of the CRPD. EPSA was formed in, 20, in 2000 to bring together the advocates across Europe. The first European here, our voice conference was held in 2007. The first book was in Zabrich in Mena, Lhasa in Lebanon in 2009. Now, the goal of the project in 1996. The committee was a chairperson, Bob Dunn, the Canada, Johnson, Germany, Martin, New Zealand, Carlos, Australia, Lincoln, and Netherlands, uh, and Netherlands, and Jack Dunn, England. Belief and value of whatever oh, you guess. Mark, it, yes. Uh, we we don't need to to read all of this out uh, as a reminder. This was just to show that the 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 goals uh, uh, that were written in 1996 were um, yeah. are, are similar now to what we're doing now. Oh, good so point. This this was written as a reminder, but by the first Inclusion International uh, Self-Advocacy Committee. Um, and all of the beliefs and the goals and the principles are basically the same now as they were back then. So this is a, this is a, a document that's almost 30 years old, but is still relevant and useful. So we don't need to read it all out, Mark, as, as, as a reminder. OK, thank you. So, yeah, just explain that uh, this is part of the history that we have on self advocacy uh, movement. Next. 
So, Gary, do you want us to show the video first or do you want us to, do you want to introduce it? Yeah, I'm going to introduce it because um, I've got, got some, a short speech. I'm not going, it's not going to be a long speech. It's just to introduce the film. Okay, great. Over to you, Gary. Yeah, is that, yeah, um, is that um, hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Thank you for inviting me here today. It was Brighton and Hove Speak Up who put together the film about the history of the self-advocacy movement in the UK. They invited me down to Brighton to be part of the film. I really like how everyone contributed and told their life story. We have achieved so much over the years. It will teach the younger generation about self-advocacy and what they can achieve. I hope you get a lot out of this short film. Thank you, Gary. So I think we've got three clips, so we'll just show them in order, if that's OK with you. That's fine by me. Great. 1972 took place in this house 50 years ago. At the time, the campaign for the mentally handicapped invited people who were living in long-stay hospitals to come to meet with professionals. The event was called Our Life. They called it participation, not speaking up or self-advocacy. Over the next few years, some hospitals and day centres set up groups. They called them patient councils or student councils. In 1981, almost 10 years after the first meeting, MENCAP started a participation forum. It was all about learning how to do self-advocacy. They met in London. Gary Borlay was there. He was a young South Africa at the time. Well, we were um, very new and of course I was just coming out from my day centre and there was a group of people, or other groups of people coming from various day centres from, from different London boroughs and um, we did actually form a smaller group of about eight, eight of us, and but um, in the early days we were talking, you know, all sorts of things. I had my own little briefcase with me, and my three-piece suit, and a, and a, and I had moustache and everything. All you know, it was, and I was a young man, and and also probably an angry young man, and uh, and. The, we were talking about things that were concerned people from with um, what was happening um, in day centres. You know, a lot of people were angry about all sorts of things. 1984 was a big year. Gary and some other South Advocates went to the International South Advocacy Conference in the USA. International conference was like overwhelming. It was just um, good role models of the Americans and Canadians there um, were actually like speaking on um, soap boxes or what they call it, you know, speech boxes, and speaking up for themselves, being very political and. I thought this is this is something we should have back in England, and and so I learned a lot during my t time in Seattle, where the conference was. 
Um, the first conference helped to, to set up People First in this country. Can you tell us a bit more about label jars, not people? That, that was a t-shirt at the time that we got the from, a, actually the idea came from America at the time. We saw that and because they were f fighting against mental ret retardation, which is a horrible word in itself, but we were fighting against the word they're using at the time called mental handicap. And it was during the later, during those 80s that people with learning disabilities at the time didn't like that label. They, they hated it. They think it was an insult. And they wanted preferred learning disability. And that when we, we decided that was the, but to, to use that term, but people prefer to be called by their name. So that was the idea of, of also selling the, also the t-shirts in this country with label jars, not people. 1970. This is the, the next clip from the video. Is that okay to share, Gary? Yeah. Um, I think someone's in the English channel. One of the interpreters is in the, the English channel. My bad, sorry. No worries. But I did. In 1998, five people with learning disabilities met with the Department of Health to talk about setting up a national forum. The national forum started in 2001 as a part of the white paper Value and People, which promised a better life for people with learning disabilities and their families. It was the first time there was a national voice for people with learning disabilities in England. To make the National Forum work, England was split into nine areas. The National Forum had a regional forum in each of these areas. Lots of other small groups started at this time and would go to their regional forum meetings. The National Forum did a lot of work to try and make things better. In 2004, the Forum started doing some work on health care and pushed the government to improve the health care. In 2007, they got involved in the Stamp Out Hate Crime campaign. In 2009, they got involved with the No Secrets Review, helping to prevent abuse. In 2011, the forum produced a guide to self-advocacy. In 2012, they published Staying Strong. But in 2017, it all stopped because funding for the National Forum from the government stopped. Michael was on the forum and he said, I don't know how the voices of people with learning disabilities is going to be heard in the future. The big achievement of the National Forum was to show that people with learning disabilities can have a real say in making things better for people with learning disabilities. And we have, we have one more clip from the video.
South Africa is important to me because I think it gives people a chance to have a voice and if they're not heard then no one get anywhere in this world. Well for me self-advocacy is important because um, it makes people within disabilities and autism uh, be more included in things and to show everyone else that they're people too. It means to help me speak up for myself and to do what's right for me. Why is self-advocacy important? Because it's not only just about speaking up about what you want in your life and what changes you want, but also speaking up with other people, with other people learning difficulties, with disabled people, to make real big changes in our life. People out there don't believe, but people learn what is dance and drum autism can do those things, can achieve it, but it just shows you what we can. It just, all we want, is what we've always wanted, is to be given a chance. You know what I would really love to see just across the like world and the nation and like just have more groups like like that does self advocacy like like have a group in Catford have a group in Lewisham because I just don't think there's enough of them across the country and stuff like that so I would really like to see a, a group in every in each person's area. It would be great to see that because then we feel like we've done our jobs. Our film is just the short outline of this important history. There is so much So that, that's the last clip from the, the video. Um, is there anything else you wanted to, to add, Gary? No, I've just, I just... It's, 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 it's good that people had to share stories and their feelings about about what South Africa has done for them. And we're hoping younger generations will come along learning about leadership and self-advocacy. And uh, they'll be the fu future pioneers of the self-advocacy movement worldwide. Um, and we need to get bring together internationally a self-advocacy organisation. Thank you so much, Gary. Um, I think we can, can everyone give Gary a, a big round of applause and a big thank you for sharing the, the video. Well done, thank you very much, Gary. And I'll, I'll hand back to you, Mark. Thank you very much for the history and shared in those uh, video. It is very important to learn and to know uh, where, where I come from as a self-advocate and why it is important to come together as self-advocates and learn about these histories as we are moving as uh, self-advocates. Uh, share the screen. Now, now uh, 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 next one to speak is Peter He speak about our journey as a advocates and uh, co found national organization of advocates becoming empowered as a said at here. So, my name is Tian Ellis, um, and I uh, live in, in the U.S., and I work for um, TASH, which is an a advocacy organization, and I also work for Inclusion International around Listen, Include, Respect. I first got involved in self-advocacy when um, our, used to be our high school teacher, met a person who came in from Nebraska and talked about people first with for people with intellectual disabilities. They had in Illinois, they had a lot of people with physical disabilities and family members doing advocacy, but not a lot of people with intellectual disabilities. 
and they had us come to a meeting uh, and we met with People First of Canada and People First of Nebraska to talk about what self-advocacy was all about. And then um, after that meeting, we started talking a little bit more about if we would be interested in the self-advocacy movement, um, starting a People First group. Um, so it took us about quite a bit of time to work with each other and network with each other and learn about self-advocacy. Um, and the council and the um, USED, which is the University on Centers of Excellence, um, came together and provided some money for that meeting. And also the director of the university affiliated programs, uh, the USEDs there, the Centers on Excellence, asked my our uh, friend Leanne if she would be interested in working for her at the university. And she said, um, to him that she wouldn't work for him unless he hired a self-advocate with her. And so then I was approached to be hired and we worked on the self-advocacy support project at the university to then form self-advocacy groups in Illinois. And then what years were that, uh, Tia? 1980. Right. We started People First of Illinois with five members. Um, we started at uh, for local chapters. Uh, then we formed a state chapter, but yeah, and then we have many groups in Illinois, um, self-advocacy groups, you know, they're not all people first. After that, they came to Chicago and we had formed a steering committee, which was made up of people with disabilities to talk about the national organization, what it should look like, um, different things like that. And we felt that the advisors, the support people were getting in their way of us talking about things. So they were, they kept on going back and forth how it should look and they were arguing back and forth. And so me and my friend Nancy Ward um, talked to some other support people that were sort of neutral, kind of like not into the argument stuff. And we talked about talking to the group about kicking the advisors out, actually. Um, and that was really scary for people because they thought that if they could kick support people out, they wouldn't come back. And so we talked them into kicking support people out and um, said to them that if the support people were really supportive on what you're doing and believed in self-advocacy, that they would understand that and respect us and come back when we told them to come back. And so that's what we did. So for two hours we met. We divided up into groups, talked about the structure. So a group took the structure of the national organization. Uh, other people talked about what the mission should be, what the belief should be, some of our first goals, what we should do with it. Um, they came back in two hours and they were really surprised of all the things that we got through in those two hours without support people in the room. Uh, probably about 15 of us. And the and save is divided up into nine regions, so there's two regional reps in each region. That's still the way we work now. Yeah, probably early nineties. Then um, I think a really good project, um, which happened um, with. Um, at a national level, we did where the National Self-Advocacy Organization and the National Parent Organization uh, started working together on uh, different topics and different things um, that are that people could uh, advocate together. But the reason that was important is because on a lot of times it's usually the self-advocates on one side and the parents on the other side. Um, and we were trying to make that um, difference where parents and self-advocates can work together instead of on opposite sides on what they believe that are good things for people with disabilities to be a part of. And uh, I think it was a really great grant that uh, people work together um, with uh, parents and parents worked with people with disabilities and they learned how to work with each other. They learned how to do, to do different projects and speak together. And I think it was uh, really great. And they still have some friendships uh, now, even now, that has lasted that long. 
we still have many places that have inst institutions, um, you know, that uh, people are still in institutions and not in the community. Um, that's still the same. Uh, you still have uh, people not believing that people with disabilities can do some of the decision making and progress on boards and committees and believing that people with disabilities can make a contribution. Um, improvements. Uh, I think we worked really hard on getting rid of the R word. Um, two women went all the way to the Supreme Court to be a part of their community and to live in the community. We got that law passed. Um, so there has been some improvement of getting those laws passed um, and having some people be able to get out of the institution um, and fi figuring out a way to do that through the Olmstead mm -hmm. um, piece of legislation. And as advocacy groups, I was a part of sleeping on the steps of the Supreme Court and be able to go into the Supreme Court when Olmstead was passed. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just an amazing day for people getting their rights and all the advocacy work that went around and um, pushed for that to happen. And the people that stayed outside on the steps showing their, you know, all of their support to the two women that were trying to live in the community mm -hmm. and all the advocates doing all that work to, you know, write letters to their Congress people to talk to their, you know, other people about how important it is for people to be able to be a part of their community and live in their community. I think it's important for people with disabilities to join the self-advocacy movement to make sure that they have a voice on what the things that are important to them in their life. Um, I think it's important for younger people, but um, like I said, when I was younger, um, self-advocacy wasn't around that much and there wasn't a whole lot of people learning about speaking up. And so I really didn't have any role models. Now you have the opportunity of to have some advice and support and resources from amazing leaders that are out there that could help you, you know, find your voice to speak up, to have that courage to say what's important to you. Um, and to talk about the things that you want out of your life. Um, and I think you still need people who have those voices from before still talk about this because, you know, at any time we could still go back to where people were not included and not having a voice all over again. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people who have power could still take a stroke of a pen and erase all that stuff at any time of uh, services or anything else that benefits people with disabilities to have their rights and the opportunity to speak up and make decisions about their lives. It can go away in one minute. Um, I think we need more young people to learn that history and to work with people um, and to be able to know that, you know, you're here because of all the work that we've done. The only reason they're there is because all the people who came about that earlier have worked their butts off to make that happen, you know, to make transportation accessible, to, you know, include kids with kids in schools, um, learning how to work with each other and parent groups and parents working with people with disabilities instead of having two different sides. It's getting better, but we still have a lot of work. There's still people that don't have a voice, are still locked away, and still out there trying to figure out a way how to be included. The best part about my job is that I get to be a person who helps speak to people with disabilities to talk about self-advocacy and then to support somebody and to see the first time that they spoke up in a meeting or they told their parents that they wanted something or their teacher or spoke up in their goals in school about what's important to them. And to know that you had a difference, you made a difference in that person's life to be able to do that is really awesome. Um, I think for the people who are just starting on this work, um, by giving people opportunities and chances to go to conferences and meetings where they're talking about self-advocacy so that they can uh, hear about it, they can get the courage to maybe think about starting a group um, if you have an advocacy group somewhere else near your state, 
maybe asking them to come and speak at your group meeting um, so that they can learn a little bit more that peer-to-peer -peer support about self-advocacy and why it's important. Um, those are all really good things that you can do uh, to remember that this is, as people with disabilities, this is your meeting, not your support person's meeting. So to remember that you should be the ones making the decision about your group and speaking up for what's important to you. Um, for support people out there, get in touch with other support people. Have meetings with other support people and talk about what it's like to be a support person. I know in our advocacy group, we used to have all our support people um, come together once a year and talk about things in their groups, what's working well, what they might need extra help with, but that peer-to-peer -peer support for them too um, is a good idea. And to remember you're not alone. She wasn't able to join, but um, she. Hello. But I can't listen to the interpretation. It doesn't work. I don't understand. I can't understand it. We have. I, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand a thing. I I put it in Spanish and it wasn't working. I put the I did it I had the subtitles but it didn't work. But it doesn't work. Maybe you have a problem with your computer. No, the subtitles don't work at all. They don't work at all. Maybe you have a problem in, with the computer because I can hear it. I do listen to the I listen to the interpretation perfectly. I I heard it perfectly. I I heard it perfectly. I so maybe it's a. I can't hear. I can't hear. It. I had I had to put the to... subtitles on. Uh, Louise, can you can you help me translate for for the people who aren't in the the in the rooms? Um, so as a reminder, to hear the interpretation, you need to click the interpretation button. From English to Spanish, please, Louise. As a reminder to everyone, the, the interpretation button should be on your Zoom bar. I think it's your mobile phone because the other day you had the same problem. I click on interpretation and then Spanish, let's see, okay. I click here, let's see if it works. Okay. So let so Mark will pass back to you, and you can uh, introduce uh, Chosen Powers video. Uh, 
yes. So our next uh, video speaker uh, is a video from Children Power from Hong Kong. So watch a video from Children Power or Hong Kong. Thank you. Okay. Um, Chosen Power are using um, subtitles. So um, I will read out some of the subtitles in English and the interpreters will obviously translate into, um, into Spanish and French and Portuguese. And I hope that's okay for everyone. So dedicated to our dearest parents and our fellow friends. You cannot learn. You cannot learn. You cannot learn. You other people can go and I know no money for you. Sorry, Mark. Can you Yeah, because it makes a lot of uh, noise. You need to reduce the sound so that we can hear you. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. After a few years, in November 12, 1995, we found our self-help organization. This is the first of its kind in Asia. Chosen power. Staff did everything for us. They organized everything. We have no chance to share and discuss, let alone plan and organize. So we have not much growth. We have no opportunity to learn how to organize our own activities. So we want to have our own group to help self, to learn self-help and mutual support.
For equal opportunity and full participation, what can I do? I want to learn to live and work with other people and to share our success. If everybody can participate and have equal opportunity, the world will be more colourful and have more warmth. On behalf of Joseon Power, we dedicate these clips of film to you. All members of Chosen Power are different. We lead different lives. 1987 being inspired by the UK's gateway movement. We met friends, enjoyed our leisure and organised workshops at Island Gateway Club. In 1992, we attended independent international in Panama. We met people first in We found a the self-advocacy organisation is independent from other services. We chose our name. What have we done in 29 years? We registered under the society ordinance. All new members have voting rights and can stand for election. Associate members of the organization are members of the Membership fee is Hong Kong $100 for having if you're employed, and people with no income pay Hong Kong $80. The organisation is run by an annual general meeting and a board of directors. There's an executive committee and a parents network. Members designed the logo after seven years. All members vote for Lee Wai Hong, our ex-parents it has three colors. Blue waves in the ocean, life has ups and downs. We have the green plants growing up, like bright sunshine and warm the earth. To form an organization, one has to be no money, there is no staff. Thus, year fundraising. Other income includes membership fees, donation, local overseas and government grants. We have no funding, yet we travel a lot to learn strength. The early days we participated in local and overseas meetings to support Our horizons widened, we all worked We paid tuition for you to take different art forms. We use art to promote community inclusion. For example, starting to learn playback theatre in 2003. In 2006, we attended New York school training. Last year, we attended the South Africa International Conference, both facilitated inclusive workshops with dramatists. In Hong Kong, South Africa, we attended the first workshops of the public. We run South Africa workshops in Taipei and Shenzhen. 
Internationally, we attend conferences and facilitate workshops. We have worked with disabled persons organisations to promote the RGC since 2007. For the first two years, we have been the acting and script writer of an inclusive drama show. We have run over 100 workshops and drama shows in Hong Kong and overseas. 2012 and 2020, we have attended the lobbying sessions with the RPD Hong Kong reports. Then we mainstream the disability issues in the Convention on the Rights of the Child, Conventions on uh, Women and the Conventions on Hong Kong. We work with Hong Kong University Law Faculty. For policy advocacy, members prevent our views at select home meetings. Key members are appointed in consultative committees. For information accessibility, we set up an easy production team. We provide audit services and run workshops. Recently, we applied Nagomi Pastel Art, Zen Temple, and Dot Art to realize decision making support. We are an associate member of Inclusion International. We have been involved in seven TV productions with Radio Television Hong Kong. We have produced six publications, nine short videos, and ten drama productions. Government seldom consult us. Some say we are the old things moving the mountains. We actualize self advocacy in daily life. We realize the decision support in our daily lives. We produce state no institutions and documented our chosen path in 30 years. With or without So thank you very much to, to Chosen Power. I think some of Chosen Power are on the call, but it's it's very late for them. So they may not um, be able to take part, but thank you very much Chosen Power for, for making and sharing that video for us. Um, I'll hand back to you, Mark. Yeah, thank you very much for sharing that. And uh, thank you for your effort to join, though so, uh, it is late. Um, can you share the screen? Now we are going to have uh, our discussion, uh, questions and, uh, the question, the first question is, why is it important to understand the history of civil advocacy movement? Why do you think it is important to understand this history of civil advocacy movement? Just to know uh, how it was started, why do you think it is important? Anyone to start? Yes, Anna, is that a hand? I think it's important also to understand the movement because we are the ones who need to disseminate it we people with any kind of disability and 
other people need to understand us. I don't know whether I explained myself. May I add something? And also, I would like to say that I might need to leave in a few minutes, Eilish. So uh, we will meet again, if I understood it correctly, on the 24th of July, and it will be about inclusive health, isn't it? It will be on a Wednesday, same hour, same time as today. Just wanted to say that out loud before just leaving in a few minutes. And maybe, I don't know whether Eilish or Mark, would you, could you please take the final picture of, of us all since I have to leave earlier? Thank you very much, Anita. Don't you worry, I will do it. Can I say something? Hi, everyone. It's Fernanda. I would like to say something, to share something with you. Because part of the importance of our movement is to know about our rights and to know and to be able to live in different environments, labor, social, health environments. I think it is important and that is why I, in my opinion, self-advocacy is part of our own empowerment as people with a disability. Thank you. May I add something also? Can you hear me? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Well, what, could you please repeat the question? The question I didn't understand the question is, why is it, either. Why is it important to understand the history of self-advocacy movement? Why is it important to understand the history of the self-advocacy movement? Oh, okay, thank you. Well, I think it is important because, well, the more people speak up, the better uh, it is for us to listen to other experiences. So the more people speak about our movement from many different places, the better it is for all of us. Did you understand well what I mean? Thank you, Caroline. Carolina. Yeah, we understand. So we'll go. We'll go to Luis, then Gary, uh, and then Jacinta, and then Anna. Yeah. Luis. Good morning, afternoon, everyone.
And also in this way, we can make the network grow so that all together can destroy barriers and we can know about our history, about our goals, about the purposes and the great difference that we are making for a better world for all of us. Thank you very much. Is that okay? That's great. Thank you, Louise. That's a really important message. Gary, do you want to go next? Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, I think there needs to be a mem memorial for people who lived and died in those big institutions. I know it's a bit morbid, but uh, we need to remember that those people and and the history as well. And I don't think history should be dis disappeared. And they need to teach the future generation about people with learning disabilities, about um, the self-advocacy movement, the history and everything in in schools, um, in, through a curriculum and all that. That's what, what I see, like to see. Thank you so much, Gary. I think that's a really important point, not forgetting the people who came before us and the people who, who had to live and, and died in institutions. And I think that's a really important point. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, Jacinta, yeah. do you want to go next? Jacinta, do you want to go next? Jacinta, I think you're frozen. Okay, let, let's go to Sherry. Sherry, do you want to share? Uh, thank you. Question wants answers for me because, because I am... A okay, question wants answer, but you discussed the move, the self efficacy movement. Uh, because... It's Katinta, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, because I am older, I realized how difficult it was for persons with disabilities when I was younger. We were laughed at and bullied. The advocates of that time helped all persons with disabilities to change people's attitudes towards disabled persons today. I was an advocate without knowing it because I asked to be handled the same as typical persons. I was the first in many things I did in South Africa. We should all realize that we are self-advocates when we ask for the same opportunities typical persons have. Now other persons can also get the opportunities to do the things we have to fight for. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, now, uh, Stephanie? Hello, everyone. How are you? The most important thing for us was the self-advocacy when we were supported in legal actions and legal causes. Since uh, in many occasions when we have to uh, take some measures, uh, some decisions, we need support, we need advisors, we need to know who are our supports. And Nowadays, in Brazil, people with a, a disability are saying out loud what do they need, and we have a document and what that we can show. And in this document, uh, with this, we can take it to, to the bank and the people supporting us uh, can help us uh, in bank paperwork, in all the financial decisions 
can be taken by just ourselves with this support. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. I can see you've got your hand up, Anna. Sorry, I didn't know how to put my hand up. So yeah, I just raised mine, like physically. Can I continue or should I wait for Jacinta or someone else? So, so why don't we go uh, Anna, Jacinta and then uh, Victoria. Okay, so it's very important for people to know our history. And not only among us, it is important to know about our movement. It is also important uh, that other movements know about us because we are people and we are like anyone else in society. This is like the movement, listen to our voices. We really need for people to listen to our voices and it is fine to remind ourselves that among the movement, we need to remind new generations and so on about the self-advocacy uh, movement. But uh, we cannot stop there. I don't know if I'm explaining myself, actually. We need to move forward, that's right. For example, in my generation, uh, back at the time, uh, we didn't know about self-advocacy groups. But now, new generations, they know that these groups exist. And as it was mentioned before, we can take the, the groups to uh, social centers or to high schools and so on, so that they know about us too. But that's it. And thank you, of course. Thank you, Anna. J Jacinta, do you want to go next? Can you hear me? Yes, so what I was saying is that uh, sometimes, uh, for example, I go to Sevillana's lesson, to flamenco uh, lessons, and in the class, I am in the same group as people who dance very well, and I do, I perform well, but not as good as they do sometimes. And what they say to me is that what is important is to include ourselves in society little by little. Doesn't matter the resort. And I think this is just wonderful. Because there are people out there who think that we have a great value, but other ones think that otherwise, and this is just a shame. Fortunately, there are less and less people of this last group, less and less people who think that we are not able to do certain things. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jacinta. I think that's an important point. Um, Vittorio, do you want to go next? It's important to know about our history due to several uh, reasons. Can you can you hear me? You're frozen a little bit. I have some connectivity issues, I'm afraid. Can you hear me better now? Little bit. 
a little bit better. It is important, as I was saying, to know about our history since we need to know where we come from. And also, we need to, to grab the legacy that we can collect from uh, previous generations. And as it was mentioned, also, if we are not uh, aware, everything that we have achieved can go to waste or people can destroy it or just get uh, stuck and not make any further progress. In our own organizations, we need to know about our history to make progress in the future and to avoid making the same mistakes as we might have done in the past. And that, that would be all. Thank you. Mark, you're you're breaking up a little bit, but I think you're you're asking um the next question, which is what are some of the, the biggest achievements that people have seen? over your careers as self-advocates, but maybe we can combine that as well. Um, I, I think the third question, a lot of people answered actually in their first question. So let's concentrate on that, on that second question, which is what are some of the biggest achievements people have seen in your work on self-advocacy? Um, and we'll just have a couple of minutes on that because we're, we're getting close to the end of the session. So uh, maybe we can take three or four people, um, if anyone has any comments. Yeah, Luis, what's the biggest achievement that you've seen in, in the self-advocacy movement? Uh, the achievements that I've made as a self-advocacy person have been lots of them. We've been able to open the doors for me from my organization. We have been internationally recognized and also nationally recognized. We have changed several structures, both in education and in employment. And I have been able to get to know other self-advocates in the world that are also fighting. And we have uh, formed different networks like Empower in Latin America and both in Latin America and with and in other regions we have got together but especially as a person I have grown I've, and learned that I, I can support myself and I can support my family and friends and this is such an uh, something incredible that I have learned Thank you so much. Did you hear me? Thank you. Thank you so much, Luis. Um, I think we've lost Mark, but we will we'll carry on. Um, so we'll take uh, Fern next and then Anna. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Yep, we can hear you. Well, in my case, as a self-advocate, I've learned the to be able to live and be able to I've learned all the rights of people with disabilities and I've also been able to 
work with other people with disabilities and uh, learn together what are our rights and what is our legal capacities because before people with mental disabilities couldn't take any decisions couldn't and now we've been we have been speaking with each other and strengthening each other and this has really really helped me so that i can also do this in my own life and for example I have opened doors for myself in, in the sense that I have, I am not so dependent. I am a self-advocate of my own life and I am a self-advocate of people with disabilities. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Anna. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, well, for example, as a self-advocate, I have learned to value myself. I have, I people have started to listen to me because in my family, for example, people don't listen to me or they, they didn't used to listen to me before. Um, the fact that three people can listen to me and respect what I'm saying, hear my, listen to what I'm saying. This is so, so important to be able to love myself better, to be able to, to communicate with other people, to be able to be more autonomous. For example, when I travel, when we travel in general, I like to have different motivations. For example, when we go to a conference, an international conference, I am really motivated. I know that people are going to listen to me and this is important. Thank you. Mark, perhaps we can we can wrap up now. We're coming to the end of the, the time. So I'll just share the slides. Yeah. As you are hearing, I just say that I just want to say that I think one of the uh, big achievements is that now we are able to meet at the international level. We are able to meet on Zoom and having discussions, which is really good and uh, one of the achievements that as several of we are we are able to meet. So to continue. So we are collecting, collecting now our several books in history. This, there is a good way to happen in, to give the history of several books. Uh, picking up video about the history in the, in the UK, uh, we are doing people first Japan video on its 30 years history. We have children our video on its history. We have people from Canada has a short video. The University of Mind Minnesota has an online course about Robert Rogers history in the USA with a lot of videos. Uh Lin Lin in Australia make a booklet and also confess core uh also have powerpoint slides so this is some of the material that we have uh, uh on the on the watch uh when we are talking about the history of uh self-advocates so we all of these are links so we've got the links to all of these and i shared i shared the slides in the chat and we can share it through the email group again but you, if you click on all of these, they'll they'll go to those links, so you can access all of those resources. Um, yeah. Thank you, Edith. So, college in our survival book is the history. If your organization has the history of resources about survival advocates from fifty years or thirty 
what they say they, it is good idea to try to correct them. We can make sure the people who we can make sure the people who come before us are remembered and their hard work is valued. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, instead of 26, the date will be Wednesday on 24th July at 6 p.m. Spanish time. The topic will be inclusive history. We are, we are looking forward again to have you in the, uh, on 20th July at 5 p.m. Spanish time as we'll be talking about inclusive history. Thank you very much. I just realized that's wrong. It's Wednesday the 24th of July, not, not the 25th, sorry. The oh, 24th. yeah, sorry, sorry. I guess correction, it will be instead of 25th, 25, the date will be on Wednesday, 24 July at 5 p.m. Spanish time. The topic will be on inclusive health. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for your contribution and uh, thank you for joining uh, today's session. Thank you very much, Mark, and thank you, everyone, and, and a big thank you to all our, our speakers. Thank you, Simon, for, for sending the video. It was great to, to have you on here and to see you on the call. But thank you to everyone. Hi. 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 <laughs> ciao. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Adios. Bye. 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 Adios. Bye. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, ciao. Oh, ciao.